the reason I don't know how to weld is so I'm not in this position. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, welcome to Garage Garage! We're back at it on the K truck. We've been looking for names. You guys have kind of helped us out there, but let's get a little quick recap. On the first episode, we picked it up from Arc Performance. We kind of assessed our situation. Once we got it in, episode two, we 3D scanned it so we could send off that scan to get us a custom body kit from a legend in Japan. And then the last episode, what we did was we pulled the motor and all the other excess stuff off of it. We plan on putting a 13B rotary in, which brings us to now, we have to try and fit this thing. And uh, this morning as I walk in, it looks like the Twitch daddy's here, ready to go. Hey. Hey, Drew. And uh, the rotary daddy's here to help us. He brought us some goodies. So what are we looking at, dude? We got new housing for the build. These have to go out immediately to get a uh, machine. And that's machine for what? Uh, Semi-peripheral. So right now, this hole is shut. Mm -hmm. and you can see on the other side, I mean, like, there's nothing in there. Yeah, there's nothing here. Yeah, so they have to mill right through it and then press in a sleeve to convert semi-peripheral. Okay. That way we're gonna have to do bridge boarding. Like, it has a better idle and more power for the wheels. It's a new crank. It's actually cheaper than any other year crank, mm -hmm. but it's also lighter than any year crank. And all this stuff is interchangeable. That's crazy to me. Like and from so many years apart, that everything is still like interchangeable. Yeah, you, can, you can mess around and put different year stuff with it. You have to get everything balanced. Yeah. And then uh, how to get a new rear kind of weight? Just because we're still not sure what transmission we're gonna run, but we needed this just to send it get balanced. And later on, we have to do is just slap on any clutch that is made for an RX7. Yeah and it will work perfectly, it'll be, still be balanced. So what you were telling me before is like, this is very important as far as yeah. if, what gearbox we had and what uh, uh, I mean, clutch? I, was, I thought it was, but uh, I asked the machine shop and it says not. Okay. As long as the whole assembly is balanced as you're in, gotcha. you can put any, any weight flywheel. That's awesome. what I was wondering about. Different clutch manufacturers have different, different weight flywheels. Sure. And also we went with the uh, RX-8 hardened stationary gears. So you can get the really high RPMs because they're I mean, stock RX-8s, like, you can go to 9,500. I'm so sure we want high RPMs. Oh, yeah. Cut some footage of the boys driving on high RPMs. Yeah, and that's just all the... Seals and... Yeah, the new, all new Mazda parts, like corner seal springs, brand new corner seals. Just, I don't know anything everything, about this. Everything is brand new. <laughs> so we're gonna have to... Once I just build, it's not gonna be a smoky engine. So you got a bunch of CDs. The, yeah. This is yeah, the audio. I mean, um, <laughs> mixed <tapes>. the description. <laughs> These are the uh, what holds the oil seals in place. So when you rebuild the engine a couple of times, you have to keep an eye on these because if you have a lot of wear, this little lip right here will be all the way up here, the shiny part on it. Yeah. You look for the shiny part basically. Mm -hmm. And if it's way too high, if it's out of spec, even though you built the engine probably freshly, it'll be smoking. No flames, no smoke. So the reason we have all this today and the reason Vargas is here is because we got to get this thing shipped out. So to keep us moving because Formula D is coming up quick. We got to get this thing in there, mount it up. Uh, what I was talking about, dude, is like, this is going to have to be chopped mm -hmm. so we can get the motor up in here. I already did. I'm going to have to remake this front structure here. Mm -hmm. So that's... So where, where are you having clearance issues at? So a lot of it is right here, for one. We could probably cut that up and move it if we have to. I'd rather not. You know, from side to side here, we have kind of an issue too, I think. You can take it easy there. You think with ITVs we can make that, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. So realistically, like we just kind of have to play with how much will it affect the power or or the engine uh, if the we header, bring it in close. The header, uh, that's like the main one. The intake, not really. The header has to, it needs a little bit of space. Okay. Out of the collector. I kind of sat it back when I got it up in here because uh -huh. I remember that crank pulley. Like I measured it, it was about five inches away. That's, yeah, but that's like that's a factory crank. But since we're running only uh, an alternator. The mm -hmm. crank pulley itself is gonna be like under three inches. Oh, really? Yeah. If you had the factory water pump, it'll be about right here. Actually, right here, the pulley. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna run just the alternator, that's what I'm planning on, the pulley is gonna be right here. And then for mounting the engine, easiest way is here. That's uh, probably the best because yeah. that's where everything, like, we'll mock it up there and I'll show you. Mm -hmm. But it, it's pretty much what sits closest to there. What do we have here? Uh, here is just uh, this is where the injectors mount to. 
Okay. But since we're gonna put ITDs, it's gonna be blocked off here, and this gets blocked off. This is the ETR oh, this gets blocked off. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then probably what we were saying was doing like a sandwich plate on this. Yeah. Too. This one just put a, a adapter on it and just run the lines out of there. Right. So the only problem I saw was like with the alternator mm -hmm. sitting right up. It's like up on this frame rail here. What I was thinking is notch that, and we can you know weld in another piece even, there. Even if you had it all the way up. You can send the bottom mount to have that to come a little more out so you can have more play to move it up higher. Go. Yes, sir. We got stuff for you to do. We're gonna make this bracket. Right now, we're sitting the closest adjustments right here so it kind of hits. So if we just move it this way, it's easier to start fresh and just cut this one up. Yep. First thing, we'll make this base plate. Um, we got a <laughs> bit of 3 8 material, is what we're gonna use. I guess the most important part would be yeah. the holes have to line up. Perfectly, and then we're gonna remake this later, Kyle. Okay. So what I want to do is like once this plate's on, we'll bolt this on. We'll hold the alternator where it needs to be. Yeah. And then I'll draw these up for you. So this will probably be extended an inch. Okay. Or maybe two, and then down also an inch or so. So it can kick back. Maybe. Yeah. And then this bracket, I think we're gonna do from underneath. We're gonna get started on that, remake it, and then we'll mock it up. little adventure Can you going. Can teach me how to edit? Uh, you take this one? <laughs> uh, the reason I don't know how to weld this, so I'm not in this position. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> I'll be a fabricator, they said. It's gonna be so much fun, they said. <laughs> the oil pan on that is 14 inches wide, so this is also 14 inches wide. So I was gonna cut this out, put plates there, and then do a tube to join it. Okay. But since it's both 14 inches wide, I can't put a tube in there. Cause it'll. Cause it's just right next to it. Right. So like, I could do a straight down pad. This is a ridiculous setup. This it's is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be. You're gonna be sitting on the intake. Oof. Just mount the motor upside down or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna do. I'm way. I've been coming in here every day hoping I'd see the motor in, but instead I just see the measuring tape. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'll be back in 20 minutes, and the motor will be in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, guys. See you, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. We should just cut it and see what happens. So it fits in there pretty nice with that cut out of it. You can see how much room we have on the side. And it needs to go over just a little bit more. But I notched this out as well to fit the alternator. What we wanted to do is move the alternator again. So we're gonna have to remake that. That's why we cut out that bracket. We're gonna make our own. Like the, that bracket's probably really good for any other swap, but this one's just so tight and so weird. I think we should get this subframe together tomorrow. <laughs> Got it. We get a build broken down car. <laughs> Casey's car got destroyed last night in the police chase. He, he wasn't was, running from the police. He wasn't running from the police. Somebody else was running from the police. Somebody was running from the police and smashed the old E46. So we'll help him out eventually. Maybe on garage drive. Probably not though, because we probably won't do that. <laughs> What we are gonna do is work on this uh, K truck today. We're gonna try and cut out some mounts and get the motor actually sitting in place. I'm gonna have Kyle cut up a bracket. Well, I'm gonna draw it up uh, the way I see fit. In case we have any last minute adjustments, I wanna be able to move up and down side to side because it's a really tight fit. So getting it in there is gonna be kind of uh, difficult. I'm gonna make it easy. So today, Kyle's fabricating and I'm gonna be the camera guy. Kyle, yes. make a motor mount. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what's a motor mount? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, so I want a plate from about here to here across this with these four holes in it. And what would be nice is if we can, you know, kind of like neck it down a little bit so it doesn't look... A little bit of style. A little style. It might have to, you know, kind of curve up or something. Let's just draw something up. Let's draw it out right now. Let's knock right. it out.
All right, man, you ready to go? Yeah, we got everything measured up. All the highlighted stuff is trying not to confuse you, but it's all measured from any center point. So I put a lot of measurements on there, so any way you interpret it. It looks rad, dude. The Wordhouse logo in there, too. Man, it's just very minimal slag, too. Like, you know, there's always something from cutting it, but it just chips right off. So, that gives us the adjustability that way, which is cool. We'll probably try and run it to the center. That's cool, though, man. I'm stoked at that. That looks awesome. All right, man. It's got me feeling extra fabby because this looks cool. So, what we're, gonna, uh, we're planning to do is to kind of build some extensions off of this to keep the suspension stuff all the same. And uh, we're gonna pad this and maybe add a tube. That's gone now. We're gonna remake the whole front subframe. So what, all we need to do is keep this in line. We just need to keep in mind where this is at. This pickup point needs to remain in that spot. We'll build something that looks like the shape of this. Actually, what I, I need is to just cut this out of cardboard, the whole thing and then I'll just measure it and make it exact. This is not a piece of cardboard. This is a precise instrument to make us a subframe. So there's our custom cross member. You can see it's pretty well dropped down. Didn't weld it yet because I'm gonna take a little time to jig this up a little nicer, get a few more parts in place so we know exactly where to go. We're gonna have to add some more stuff for the control arms and then uh, the motor mounts as well. So just a, a bit more mods on this was probably what we're gonna do next time, but I'm pretty pumped on how this turned out. Like that's one of the sweetest pieces we made. Kyle did a good job getting that all. Ready to go. We made some pretty good progress. Next time, this will be sitting in the car, for sure. So, we have a few more things to think about, but got late, we're tired, we're out of here for the night. I'm pretty pumped on where we got today. Finally starting to come together, so see you next time. Do you like Garage Garage? Subscribe. Just click below and you can watch more of this more often. I know your kids sing along if you have children, or you're singing along. I have to sing every intro. It's kind of weird, actually, to be honest. It's a little bit weird. I know. You guys have commented quite a bit, which keep up, by the way. Comment below, and you can tell us if you like stuff, if you don't like stuff. We'll probably do it anyway, because it's not like we really care that much. But we do care, and we do read the comments. So comment below, click and subscribe, keep watching, and you can see me uh, singing stuff. <laughs>